Welcome to a podcast from beneath. This week, you may know our guest as Tina from Friday the 13th, A New Beginning. Please welcome Deborah Voorhees. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. The unburied dead are coming back to life. Deborah, how's it going? Oh, it's going great. Thank you guys so much for having me. Oh, no problem. We love having guests on here to talk about horror movies. And the and the projects that are part of. And I mean, and and to and to get your story too. Yep. So our first question that every guest gets is what's your favorite horror movie? Bad seed. And Bad seed? I may not even know yeah. what it is. It's I, 1959, I, if I remember correctly. And um, little Rhoda Pembroke is our serial killer. Pigtail, blonde pigtail mm-hmm. girl. How can you not love a serial killing little girl? I, I, I was, you know, snooping around and I saw uh, an interview you did. Mm-hmm. And they asked you, what would you want to go back and, and direct or, or be a part? And you said that. And I was like, i would never heard of this. And then I looked into it. I got to watch it now. I saw the little previews they have on YouTube. I got to watch amazing. this movie. It's a, yeah. great, it's a great film. I would love to redo that in modern times. Wouldn't that? That would be a blast. That would be crazy. That would it's be updated. a good film to redo. And I know they, they actually did do an update on it. And I haven't gotten to see it yet. Um, it came out, and I don't remember what it was on, but um, I think it was a TV version. I would definitely like to do, you know, an R version. You oh, know? yeah. Get a, get a really, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a great story. It's a great story. You know, this idea of this incredible jealousy, you know, the, the, the kid wins at this, um, I, I'm tr- let's see, it was a penmanship competition or spelling competition. And she gets very jealous and her first kill is killing this kid. So she <laughs> award. She steals it from oh, wow. him. And so, yeah, it's pretty intense. So uh, how'd you get started in acting? Uh, just packed up my bags and went out to Hollywood um, actually, I started before that. I, when I was wor- lived in the Dallas, Texas area, uh, before going to LA, um, I was working at the Playboy Club, and I met several people from the um, television show Dallas, and I ended up getting um, a speaking role. I ended up doing like seven speaking roles on there, different characters. You know, like I was the queen of the oil baron's ball. I was, you know, waitress a couple times, you know, different things. Um, I was flirting with Bobby in the in a bar one time. Um, there's a, a few different things. But um, so I started working as a stand-in for the brunette women like Linda Gray um, in, the, in the show. But... Well, the very first thing was a small speaking part and then worked as an extra and then as a stand-in. And I did that for a couple summers when they came to town. And um, then I packed up and um, I had my, uh, I got my uh, SAG card and went to LA. So after, um, so Dallas was Dallas, so that was your first thing, right? Dallas? Right. It was. What was the what was the experience like working on? A it TV was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed working behind the scenes more than anything. You know, for a day role going in, you just don't get to know everybody. But when you're there every day, you're a part of the crew. You're part of the team, and um, it, it just makes for a really nice, you know. Um, it's just a lot of fun. I, I I don't know if you've ever been on a film set, but you know, it's a bunch of kids, you know, who enjoy playing dress up and playing pretend. I mean, how much more fun can you get? <laughs> so it becomes 
like it, it's kind of like a big family you know you get at, it's like any job you you you're there every day you get to know people and stuff and then you just you do you do you, i you mean when i would walk on set stuff. it cracked me up because larry hagman would start singing you know the peggy sue song only with the <laughs> i love you <laughs> that was nice <laughs> so you um how would well, you audition for friday the 13th i did um, it was, I went in three times and, uh, the first time I went in, it was basically a cattle call. There was just a huge long line putting down your resume, your, uh, photo, and, um, you're just going through this long line and, um, you know, I was really, um, excited to get a call back and then get yet another call back. So it was very nice. What was it like working on on that film? It's, you know, it was a lot of fun. Um, it's a lot of silly fun, especially, you know, filming is fun no matter what, but a horror film has got so much goofiness to it. You know, you're um, at the lunch line, you know, I remember Dominic holding his arm you know, while he's trying to get something to eat. And <laughs> I remember Ron Sloan with his head and, um, you know, people with, you know, gashes and stuff on them. And it just, you know, it's just absolute silliness. It's just the kind of thing that, how could you not want to do this? It's just fun. Um, there's nothing serious about it. There's nothing scary about it. It's in the editing room that things start to get scary. Now, I have heard other actors say they've gotten scared on film sets. Um, I just haven't had that experience myself. Um, it, to me, it's, you know, the, now with 13 Fanboy, I play a role in that, and that scene gets really intense. But I can't ever say I was afraid. I was just determined to make it be as believable and realistic as humanly possible. And, um, it it's it was a lot of fun. It really was. I'm sorry. Give me. Oh one. no, that's fine. Go ahead. No, we, we'll <laughs> wind through this yeah, whole yeah. thing. <laughs> it's okay. Come on. I would like to say I'm the boss of the household. I'm yeah. not. They are. <laughs> they tell yeah. me what I can oh, do. We. Have, and it's like uh, no, you will open this door and you will do it now. On, on this show, we have two cats that that you know cause chaos in the background so we're good <laughs> okay good because i've got a lot of dogs so well i rewatched uh friday 13 5 today just as a refresher I and mean, i've seen it thousands and thousands of times uh, <laughs> it's definitely one of the more i'll say light-hearted friday 13th films um, right. kind of had some goofy stuff Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I was uh, when I watched it, I was like, "Why are there greasers in this movie?" <laughs> you guys in the car? It just it right. just you know, it came out of nowhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, a lot of and a lot of people don't like that one, and I, I do. I I dig it. You know, I I guess they were going in a different direction with that one. You know, like okay, right. Jason. You know, I da -da -da. really don't find that to be true anymore. It, it's more of a myth anymore yes it was true at first but the reality was is people love the film up until the final reveal and i thought it was they're like it's they've got great kills we've got you know yeah some amazing kills compared to some of the other films um so everybody loved it until that last moment so can you really say that they didn't and now People are much more coming back and they're just like, yeah, you know, I love it now. It's one of my favorites or it is my favorite. Mm -hmm. I hear that all the time now. And so, uh, and I've never um, had any backlash from it. I, I think I was very lucky because even if somebody was upset about that, they still liked me. And <laughs> Right. I was really glad about that. <laughs> but but honestly, I've heard wow. very little of that. Oh, more so like this kind of situation. Like, you know, we uh, we know that there's this problem and it's like, not really. I really can't say that's true. Um, yes, in the beginning, but not anymore. I, I think we're long past that stage. Yeah, rewatching it today, I was like, I don't know how you no one 
doesn't realize that he's the killer because they really <laughs> they really didn't try to hide it <laughs> right the long just like static shots on him when stuff's happening it's like oh come on <laughs> this guy's yeah <laughs> <laughs> well we already know the big reveal so i mean it's kind of like in, right you know, movie, right you know, like, i don't oh, know too wow, many okay. people who actually guessed roy um no i i know when i first that- saw it i yeah, I, I think I would have liked to have done a couple things different. One, um, I wouldn't have had um, the Vic arrested. I would have wanted him to be out there. So, you know, he was a suspect. So keep more of a, I mean, there, it is a mystery of a who done it in this one, but that would have added to the mystery. It could right, have yeah. Easily have been Vic, and then maybe have him killed toward the end, where you're like, "Oh shit, it wasn't him. Who is it then?" You know, I like whodunits, and that's kind of what I did with um, Thirteen Fanboy. Uh, you really don't know who the killer is until the very end, and there's lots of twists along the way, and a lot of you know red herrings. Now, do you still do you still talk with anybody from Part Five? Yes, yes. Um, well, uh, let's see, we had Ron Sloan and Carol Locatel came in for um, 13 Fanboy. Um, I had, uh, you know, we've been to some conventions together. Uh, Tiffany Helm um, is also somebody that um, I, I care very much about. Um, Melanie, she and I, we talk as well here and there. Um, either at a convention or on Facebook occasionally we'll say hello to each other. Uh, but uh, so yeah, here and there. I'm probably closest to Ron Sloan. And he's a dear, dear friend. And he has uh, one of the supporting roles in 13 Fanboy as well. He plays, um, D. Wallace is one of our leads and he's D. Wallace's husband in this. Yeah, I think one of my favorite characters is probably going to be Reggie. <laughs> yeah, he's a really neat guy. And I do communicate and say hi to him periodically on Facebook. I like him a lot. Well, I, I think this uh, 13 fanboy is going to be great. I mean, you got so much talent in this movie. It's almost like the ex- the expendables of Friday 13th. Yeah. <laughs> right. It is. Right? I know. I know. So you 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 wrote it and you're directing it. My um, producing partner and I, Joel Paul Rizek, we wrote it together, and then I'm directing and um, I'm editing with um, my editor. His name is Riley Morris, really talented editor. Really glad to have him on board. It's looking really good. And if you want to give us like the, I watched the trailer for it. You want to give us like the basic storyline of what this one's going to be? Sure. It's um, about an obsessed fan who is stalking the women of Friday the 13th and Halloween. Um, Dee Wallace, as you know, is from Halloween. She paid, played Cynthia Strode. And uh, then uh, we have Judy Aronson from Friday the 13th part Let's see, she was part four. We have Tracy Savage from part three and um, myself from five. Um, We have CJ Graham from seven. We have uh, Kane Hodder uh, from four different films. Um, Of course, everybody knows he played Jason as did CJ Graham. Uh, Let's see, Ron Sloan from five. We have um, uh, Jennifer Benko from seven, Laura Park Lincoln from seven. So yeah, we have quite um, a lineup. Yeah, how, how did you uh, yeah. how did you get everybody on board to do this? Called him. Just call <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm making a movie. Come on. <laughs> What's what sparked the idea for it? My producing partner and I, we were having a chat about a different film we were working on. And um, he just started asking me about horror fans and what they were like and stuff. And I was explaining that, you know, horror fans are really great. They were just um, like a bunch of kids who like to play dress up. They're, you know, they're just fun, silly, kind of great people to be around. And he says, well, is it ever scary? And I'm like, no, definitely. He was scary at any of the convention. I said, 
never had anything scary happen. I, I have heard of other people who have, but no. Um, but I said, I have had a couple of weird things happen that kind of unnerved me. And um, so one was somebody messaged me on Facebook um, Messenger and asked if um, basically, wouldn't it be cool if you died in real life like you did on Friday the 13th? Jeez. Like, <laughs> <laughs> not really on my top 10 list of things wow. to do. Wow. And another one asked, uh, this was sent to my personal phone, which was a little more bothersome to Oh, yeah. Um, it's basically was made it clear they knew of me through Friday the 13th, and they were watching me, and that their intention was to kill me. And wow. Both of them I just blocked and it was fine. You know, obviously somebody just playing a joke, but it wasn't very funny to me. No. And so um, I was telling him about that. He goes, that's our story. And I'm like, what? Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't our story. I don't know what you're thinking, but it's not, that's, that's a, a fear. That's not my story. <laughs> and so that's, you know, that's much more real life. And then I thought about it and I thought, you know, it makes sense. Um, this is, if it scares me, it can scare other people. Oh, yeah. I mean, there, so, have been, there have been real, I mean, you think about Danielle Harris. She had a stalker for years and couldn't do anything. So, I mean, it's it really right. a real thing. Well, in Laura Park Lincoln, she had a stalker for about six years and Golly. found out that he was living in her attic. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah well, that's crazy. Like that. crazy that's like the movie that it was the movie right crazy. what was the movie holy crap what mm -hmm. was the movie where the killer was in the attic the whole time uh, <laughs> uh isn't it don't answer the phone or something like that is it a stranger calls when a stranger calls yeah when a stranger like calls that. i think that's what it was when a stranger go. calls yeah. yeah 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 i keep thinking that or that's the uh <laughs> the budweiser commercial with the penguin <laughs> 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 from the 80s <laughs> Oh man! So the um, I like I said, like I said, I watched the trailer. It was more of a, I guess it was more of just a clip, more than more than a trailer. So you, has, has the movie already been completely filmed? Are you still working on it? It is. It's it is completely filmed. Oh, we wow. were wanting to uh, get a little bit of film footage from a um, a horror convention, but we're not able to do that. So I've reached out to um, a gentleman by the name of James who um, has a podcast and he does some filming at him. And I think the images are going to work. We're going to have to upgrade them a little bit because it obviously wasn't made to go on a large screen. But then we're going to put like a record thing on it. So it looks like it's like being recorded on a cam footage where, it, you know, would make sense that it wouldn't be of the same quality. Um, right. Or other film part of the film but um i think it'll work really nicely uh we've got it edited in now um and it looks good it looks really good so did you do uh, uh like an indiegogo campaign or anything for this one yeah we did. Did. did we did we raised over 100k for it oh nice. wow i, I can't yeah. i can't learn about it too and late. then we had investors okay okay so is it going to, are you planning like a theatrical release or? Yeah, well, yes, um, but you know, so much is up in the air. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. COVID problem. So. Maybe a drive-in um, release. I, you know, I think that <laughs> we're just going to have to wait and see. I don't know the answer right now. Um, a lot's going to depend on what distributors are doing, if the theaters are even open. Um, is it smart to wait or does it make more sense to go ahead and have a release uh, with the right people? Um, it could still be very good and people are doing well with um, direct releases like that. So, yeah, that seems like it's going to be kind of the way of the future, I think. Right. <laughs> this is going to drive people crazy. Let okay. me. I'm so oh, no, sorry. It's, it's fine. Rosebud? <laughs> here is the terror. Hey, there he is. <laughs> right here. Or her, she, um, she, okay. I live in the mountains, and this little girl was out there trying to make sure that the bear did not get to our apricots. There you go. <laughs> telling her we share. She says, no. We, 
No, we love you can animals. tell I, she's very, very anxious to get back out there with the deer. <laughs> I have a little, here with mama. I have a little chihuahua and she runs this whole house, but that's my oh. dog. And she's just, I know how it is. She barks at everything. Like she's going to tear them apart. It's like, you're so tiny. <laughs> I know. I know. She, she thinks she could tear anything apart. And I'm almost certain that she's right because yeah. <laughs> she's a little toughy. I'll tell you, she's fast and incredibly smart. She's an Aussie doodle. Oh, and, oh my God. Is she freaking smart? <laughs> yeah, we but, got a dog behind me on the bed sleeping right now. So. Oh yeah. Oh, nice. oh, oh Brody's over there. <laughs> yeah. Is he wearing his beret? <laughs> Not yet. No, no. He's, he's sleeping. So. <laughs> I saw that Facebook post. <laughs> Get down. You're going to stay here in my lap because mama doesn't trust you. <laughs> so what, where was we at here? When, when do you, when do you see the movie coming out? Do you have a date or anything yet? I really don't know. Our goal has been the end of 2020 end, meaning sometime in the fall, you know, um, October, November range. That's been kind of our target or goal, but I just, I don't know. Um, I think it depends on, you know, whether it makes sense to uh, hold out for a theatrical release or not. Um, it's, it's a, it's a tough call. It really is. Um, but, you know, there have been plenty of films that are doing really well without going to the theater. So it's not like it's the kiss of death or anything. No, ma'am. Right. She wants to go get. Yeah. I, I always, <laughs> always thought of that. Like, man, everything goes to streaming so fast. And I remember you know, being in, you know, a junior high and we'd go by, my bus would go by the video store. And I'd see the new videos coming out and, and it took, you know, almost a year for mm -hmm. things to go out on VHS and then DVD. And now things come out so fast. And I'm thought, right. man, I hope the theaters, you know, I still enjoy going mm -hmm. for the experience, but sometimes you see the commercial and you're like, I don't know if I'm going to go see that. <laughs> like, I'll, right. I'll just wait for it to come out in a month. But right. um, I do I love the drive throughs again or, or drive ins because I've never been to one. Oh, my goodness. I think that it's very possible we may have a resurgence with this. You know, drive in movies would be wonderful to have. I'd love to open. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have I think it would be very cool to open up a drive in movie. I still have two that are in driving distance of where I live right now. So. So you've been to one before then? Oh yeah, I saw. I've seen a bunch. I can't remember all of them, but I've seen I've seen a bunch of stuff on at the drop. I do have a, a question to ask. Uh, out of the new stuff that's sound horror, what has been one of your favorite ones to come out, or something that you've really liked that's come out? Not necessarily. I love ghost favorite. stories. Oh, uh, okay. You know, um, so anything with the insidious, anything. Oh wow. Uh, Along that line, I I just love those stories. Um, what lies beneath? That's a uh, good one. You know, Not many others. people have said that one. Yeah, I love that movie. To me, yeah. it's very scary. You know, it's just yeah. about uh, <laughs> prove to me that ghosts don't exist. Go on, prove it. It's one of those things. Uh, <laughs> you can you know, I don't get scared when I'm watching Jason at the movies. It's not scary. Because I know that he didn't just rise up out of the grave. Mm -hmm. It's not real. Um, but prove to me ghosts aren't real. Go ahead. You can't. I think all of us, I, I think if, if, anytime I've watched one of those movies, you know, you you get done watching your movie, you're going to bed like, oh, it's late and you shut off all the lights. You still got that feeling like, you know. Yeah. I it's know. just an uneasy feeling. Yeah, I so saw I a meme that. that I really liked and it said, <laughs> um, you know, it, it if you're feeling alone, turn on a horror movie. <laughs> you mm. <don't> want any <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Which I just, I love that. I think that's hysterical. Okay, go ahead and go see Daddy. Hopefully, <laughs> too loud. I'm along. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, have you ever, what's a, like a celebrity that you've met that you were starstruck over? Uh, somebody I've been starstruck over? I yeah. Oh, um, I haven't really had that. Um, hi, honey, you can come through. Um, gosh, I don't know. 
I, I don't know. I guess when you work in the industry, you kind of just know that everybody, you're just, everybody's just human, you know, we all put our hands on usually one leg, but some of us get them and put them both <laughs> behind, but for the most part, you know, we do. So I can't really say starstruck, no. Aaron, do you got any questions? Oh, I'm, <laughs> I thought you had something lined up. I don't want to interrupt your questions. <laughs> oh, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I mean, uh, I know we covered a, a bunch of stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm just looking forward. I, I really like that the independent part of film is coming back. You know, a lot of people have some awesome projects coming out. And that is pretty much the only new stuff that I really look forward to seeing you know you see the commercials come out and this movie's in you're like oh okay i've seen something like that but the independent part a lot of the 80s stuff is coming back not only in movies but in style i mean i think that's pretty neat i don't know what you think about that right um yeah no i i think that the uh independent film industry uh, is very strong. We're getting some really good films from it. Um, and we get to get different stories this way. Because a lot of stories aren't being told at the studio level. They're yeah. really concentrating so much on these, you know, out of control, huge budget films. And, um, and some of them are really good when they have, you know, good characters and stuff. But I, I could just damn near go to sleep when it just... Um, one action after another. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm not a cat. Those images, I'm not sitting there yeah. swatting at them. They're not fascinating <laughs> to me. If the characters aren't good, I'm I'm bored to tears. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got to care about the people. And it's like, okay, let's see, in the first five minutes, you just slaughtered a thousand people. Nice. <laughs> Didn't know one good of them. <laughs> You know, and I know they're actors, so I have like no connection to this at all. But give me a connection to the character and then I'm invested in the film. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think that's what a lot of people want. You know, that's right. Like, like you were talking about, you know, the, the movie Bad Seat, you know, you get something that, you know, is kind of a, you got your red herrings and everything. And I, I like movies like that too. It keeps you guessing. It's like, what's going on here? I, I'm trying to figure this out. Right. And, Absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm not a I'm not a guy that's looking for shock factor. I'm not going to down those movies because some of them are good. But right. I, I mean, I, I'm kind of like the same way. I, I I like psychological stuff more than anything. Like, wow. Right. See that coming whatsoever. Right. So, well, it, it, like Kate Fear. Kate yeah. Fear, master of that. You know, if you really look at it. Uh, there's this constant threat out there. You know exactly who the killer is. Mm -hmm. And yet there's this intensity and constant threat. And yet, if you look at it, not that much is happening. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like so intense. Or, you know, when he shows up at the kid's school, you know, in the theater. I mean, it is really intense. So... Yeah, but yeah. That, orig that original one, though, that Robert Mitchum, he was way better. Back really? Out. I love them both. I, I don't <laughs> yeah. have... I, mean, I like Bobby. He did a oh, good job. Oh, I do, job. too. I think Bob De Niro did an amazing job. I, yeah. I think he was brilliant. So on um, 13 Fanboy, do you have a lot of good kills? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that y'all are doing... Uh, I mean, y'all are doing practical effects in this, correct? Yes, I mean, that's absolutely. what this movie, and that's the best mm -hmm. thing ever. <laughs> yeah, that's what we love yeah. on this show. Oh, hell yeah. Right. The practical. <laughs> mm -hmm. No CGI. Who, who, who did you have right. doing Who did you have doing your special we effects? We had uh, two uh, really incredible special effects artists. One is Nora Hewitt, and one is Meg Wilbur. And both of them were on um, the face-off challenge. Nor Hewitt won it. Oh, wow. And Meg Wilbur was one of the contestants and did a beautiful job. They both are really talented. Very cool. Yeah, you yeah. got some good people on that. Well, without, like, I guess do. without spoiling anything, what, what's, your, what's your favorite kill from the, from the film? 
I can't tell you without. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that might spoil something. It might be. Yeah, I guess it could. It it might. Might. The fans, that is one thing I've learned. I checked with them because I was like trying to figure out, you know, what do we want to put in a teaser? You know, do you want to see a kill in the teaser? And they're like, no, 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 no. That's to be seen in the movie. They don't want to see it until the movie comes out. See, that's, I think Mom's that's, a word. that's the one thing missing too. Like, you know, I, I, I really love watching, I, I go back and watch the old like grindhouse trailers and stuff. They don't give you too much, man. They just give you a little bit. And now it's like the movie's coming out and they give you a little bit. And then it's been out a week and I don't have time to go to the theater in a week, but whatever. And they show mm -hmm. more and I'm like, stop showing more. I mean, I, just show the whole movie already, you know? Right. <laughs> I, I like I'm a little mystery a policy. to that. I'll watch up to one minute of a trailer and then I turn it off. Yeah. You know, by the time when they have these two and a half minute trailers, it's like, <laughs> whole story i don't need to go to the movie now <laughs> yeah i saw a trailer the other day for a movie called greenland and it was like oh yeah okay i know the whole movie now it still looks interesting <laughs> but the trailer just gave everything away like i know exactly what's going to happen on this movie <laughs> i yeah, just i just hit stop and won't watch anymore there's no there's no mystery or any kind of teasing ever uh, i mean right. just like back in the day just you had the guy with the deep voice and everything. It was 60 like, seconds. Oh, man. You don't yeah, need a trailer like, longer than 60 seconds. Like, don't go in the attic. You know, it's like, <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. And then you see someone scream and nothing happens and don't go in the attic. It's like, what the right. hell is going on here? No, I can't see Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, like, I love stuff like that, man. It's just, mm -hmm. uh, it's a lost art. It really is. Right, right. But with the independent stuff, that's why I like a lot of these coming out. I know we got behind some projects and there's there's a couple of projects with some names that would come from that, you know, era of movies. And then you got some that I mean, it's it, I, I just love everything that's going on right now with independent film. I really right. do because they, it, they're just bringing it back and it's something it's something new. Absolutely. So why do you think there's been like a resurgence of slasher in the woods movies? You know, I think that there always comes a time for nostalgia. People look mm -hmm. and, you know, feeling nostalgic about the past. And um, it's just kind of our time for that. Otherwise, we're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I really think that it's, you know, I mean, people like me and Carrie that we would go to the video store and we'd mm -hmm. scroll the aisles and, and we'd watch all these and and all these new you know independent directors they did the same thing you know mm -hmm. like oh man I, I we all want to make a slasher movie because we we love them we love right. those kinds of movies or or you know a, a thriller movie from back in the day right and i i think that's why it's doing so well now is you got you know we're all grown-ups and got you know our jobs and families and stuff but we like that kind of thing and i think i think that it helps out a lot because there's a lot of us you know, yeah. <laughs> so absolutely, I, that's my opinion, though. I could be wrong, right? Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Now, there's one thing that I found out that I found out today was going back to um, a new nightmare or not a new nightmare, shit, mm -hmm. a new beginning, Friday Thirteen Part Five. Um, your your sex scene was it was edited down a lot correct it was not <laughs> it not okay oh, it I, don't, I, I think they just put that out there <laughs> to make everybody go ooh, ooh. you know yeah. i sorry we it would we that somebody had, one person said it was three minutes long somebody else said it's two minutes long and you know in movie time that's like an hour you know that's a right. lot. yeah and um no you guys would have been bored to tears <laughs> <laughs> What you saw is what you got. <laughs> I think, I, you know, I, I find it so interesting. I really think that was part of just promoting the movie, trying oh. to, to think that there was, oh, look at this. This is so exciting. And it's like, I was there. <laughs> You're like, uh, no, that's, that's what it really, you know, <laughs> it wasn't all that. So uh, I, I know another rumor was going around that, they cut back my death scene because they actually um, took out the part where the garden shears went through my eyes. Not true. 
To do that, they would have had to make a whole prosthetic for the head. It didn't happen. They didn't make it. It was always meant to be just the reveal, you know, the coming down the blood up and then the reveal on the body when he rolls me over. Yeah. I, so there, was, there was a lot of that in that movie where it was, you only seen the after. Yeah. But yeah, what, you, what's you, interesting you, you, you is you I cannot tell sad. you how many fans think they saw it. Right. <laughs> really? Mine completes it. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh. Any death to do with like the eyes, it just bothers me. Especially your death scene, any other death scene I've seen with like the eyes, I'm mm -hmm. like, oh man, that's freaking terrible, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't yeah, we're, stand we're that. We're all kind of attached to him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I guess the other stuff that I read too that I guess that this movie had to go, it had to go to the uh, ratings board like three times to get away from an X rating. It was like, I mean, was that? I, you know, I don't know if that's true or not. It may be. I just know it didn't have anything to do with the scenes I was in. Right. See, you know, it, it just, you know. I, I don't understand. I don't know. I kind of think that's, I'm guessing that's a little <laughs> bit more folklore because not yeah. only did they, they shot, one of the things was with Tiffany Helm, they shot it to the death scene two ways. And, you know, they already had that scene already knocked out. They knew they were going to get in trouble for it. So <laughs> it makes it makes for a much better story of oh this you know kind of thing. Well, see, and I mean like, the, the most that they could have done with my scene, it was basically the same thing. A lot of kissing, and I mean so much kissing that my jaw hurt by the time <laughs> oh, wow. a couple of weeks before I wanted to kiss again because it was just, was just too much, guys. And uh, but you know uh, you might could have done a few different angles and added a little bit more time to it, but there really wasn't you know anything that you're gonna put in there that's gonna be more to it. I mean it's it's what it was. <laughs> right, right. Well, th maybe they were just trying to hype it up like they're, they're like, okay, well, you know, exactly. We're gonna find out that it's not really Jason. It's just a <laughs> guy that went nuts. You right. Know, maybe right. they're trying to build up some sort of something for it. Right. But, yeah, I, I really think it was more about promotions than anything else. When well, I first heard that, I was like, huh? <laughs> hey, you know what? That crap still works on me. And like, this this film was banned in six different countries. I, like, yeah, oh, you know, what? yeah, right. <laughs> <see> this. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Carrie did. There. Yeah, I was just I was just looking here. Oh, like, okay. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> open and freeze. We've had a problem with that before. It freezes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Zoom. We've been having problems Zoom <laughs> cutting out Cut on this part out. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand the rating thing, man. I just never have because you know I watched a movie. Um, you, you probably know what the movie is. Uh, Vanishing Point. You remember that movie? Okay. Well, you got the girl. She's like, you know, totally naked on a motorcycle. Right. That movie's rated PG-13. <laughs> right. Okay. And then they got the other movies that are coming out. Well, and see, like, well, this that makes perfect sense. Like, why do we worry about nudity? Yeah, why? I why don't are get we all, that. I, I firmly believe that we should be all running around naked in the rain. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Dancing naked in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe You're not. Gonna, there's something wrong with the human body. Please give me a break. I know. It, it, I don't know why we're so stuck up over here about it. I mean, after no. a while, it's like, okay. I remember I've been married a, a, more than once, we'll say. My first um, husband, his, uh, my mother in law, she came to me and wanted to make sure that, you know, my mm -hmm. wedding dress was appropriate. She says, well, make sure that it, something you'd wear in front of Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, I'd go naked in front of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think. I think he's probably fa pretty familiar with everything that we got. Yeah. <laughs> Not really worried about that. I think um, the obsession is coming from humans, not from mm -hmm. elsewhere. Right, it, yeah. To me, it's, it's absolute absurdity. You know, we cover our kids' eyes because they might see a boob. Um, yeah. Fans literally tell me, when we get to our part, your part, we cover their eyes and like... <laughs> So they can see my eyes gouged out, but God forbid they see a boob. Yeah, they can see me be murdered. Okay, 
Give, give, give me that explanation. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Oh, they just chopped his head off. It's no big deal. You can see that. Oh, boobs. No. Yeah. Oh, somebody made a curse word. Oh, no. Yeah. That, you're right. That's, we're backwards. I know it. We are really messed up. We are, we are backwards. puppies on this planet. Right. <laughs> 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 do you want to give like some information on the film where, where people can find information about it you can um learn more about it by going to we have a facebook page 13 fanboy we have i you know keep people up to date on my horror group which is deborah Voorhees share horror group um i also we still have our indiegogo campaign going because since we um, blew past our um, goal, we were able to keep it up for, um, it's called what, in demand? And so yeah, yeah. up all the way through till the completion of the film. So if you still want awesome. to get the names in the credits, you can still do that. And in fact, um, I think we have two more executive producer roles that can actually be purchased too. Okay, cool, I have to check it out. I just assumed it was over and I'd already missed it. Nope. I'll have to nope. go check that one out. Sweet. Yeah. I love getting my name put in. <laughs> <laughs> IMDB listings. <laughs> Carrie, Carrie's name is going to be in a lot of in credits. <laughs> That's all right. That's a good thing. Yeah, we love. I'll we tell love. you what it it really helps so much. Um, you know, I had somebody say to me, or put a post up, and he was upset because he's um, let's see, he's one of our co-producers. And somebody says, oh, you're not like a real producer because all you did was go on Indiegogo. And I'm like, I'm sorry. One yeah. of the roles of a producer is to put money into a film. So hell yes, he's a producer. You know, yes, there is the producer that does the logistics. And that's what myself and Joel Paul Isaac were doing, were the logistics and setting it up and getting the auditions and doing all the things that need to be do done on the business. And yes, that's true. But um, absolutely, you know, we have people who put five thousand dollars in to be an executive producer. That's a lot of money. Oh yeah, yeah. helping make this film get made. Don't you dare tell me that they're not producers. Hell yes, they are. And there's trolls out there. That's all it is. I they mean, just want to be ugly. They do. <laughs> they're like, oh, this guy seems. Well, what about you? You know. Right. campaign's still open you can put five bucks in or 100 whatever yeah. right. right so i i really i really like that trend it's really cool that people can be a part of something i like absolutely. that absolutely and that's one of the things that we really wanted the fans to be a part of this especially with the title and what it's about come on yeah <laughs> for the fans on that please you can't it's fanboy Heck yeah. We had so uh, many people come out. Like when we did our horror convention, we had people come from all over the country to come and be a part of it. Um, you know, different fans and stuff that have been, you know, I've made some really good friends through this. You know, who would have thought that, you know, but I have people that I, I forget that they, I met them as fans, but because they're just, they're my friends now, you know, so. Oh well, yeah, we've met some people just doing i mean ever since i started this podcast and we just started having yeah. like independent filmmakers come on to promote their stuff we've met some mm -hmm. awesome people and some of the best horror movies i've seen in the recent years have been independent films i think yeah absolutely it's, it's the best ones you get because there's no there's no suits involved saying no you can't do that <laughs> yeah. right right mm -hmm. i think and I, and I think with you know with you being you know, coming from, you know, the Friday 13th franchise. Right. You're you're going to be able to make the better Friday 13th, you know, you know movie because I mean, you know it, right? I I hope you guys love it. I really do. I'm I'm really pleased with where we're going with it. It's it's a, you know, uh making a film is an incredibly um huge endeavor. I did want to say I I I do appreciate you given the time to come and talk to us and uh we love helping people out i mean that's what we're about we love Thank hearing you. about your stories and 
and and look forward to the projects you know now and in the future i mean anything i we all share everything i know carrie shares a heck out of things all the time so right yeah we try to help well, out I anyway i appreciate it I, it's been really lovely talking with you guys yeah no problem like i said i mean we enjoy having filmmakers on independent filmmakers just come on talk to us we love hearing the stories and you know getting mm -hmm. getting the information out there to doing you know, nice. where people can find it so if anybody's listening and you want to get involved with this film you can find them you're on indiegogo right we are indiegogo i'll put a link down in the description of this episode so everybody can Thank click you. on it and go chip in some money and let's get this movie made and coming out into a drive-in maybe <laughs> that would wouldn't be that be wonderful i really i'm serious about wanting to do a drive-in i sweet. really think it would be awesome that would be awesome that yeah would be, would i'm be with you on that mm -hmm. all right yeah so this was fun so again thanks for thanks for uh you know spending some time with us on our little show we enjoyed having you on here oh, thank yeah. you you guys take care hey, you too you too bye-bye